Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When Joe Biden was sworn in as president, the average retail price of gasoline was $2.38 a gallon. On Monday, according to AAA, it was $4.48. Many parts of the country have seen much higher prices, and this is not an accident. These are policy choices that led us here. Nor is it primarily due to Russia's war on Ukraine, as, as President Biden would like everybody to believe, because gas prices had already risen 48% since he took office. The rise in price is the direct result of this administration's assault on the oil and gas industry. On his first day in office, he canceled the Keystone XL pipeline. That was expected to bring more than 800,000 barrels of oil from Canada to the U.S. every single day. Not even a week later, President Biden signed his executive order to put a moratorium on oil and gas leasing on federal lands. And just last week, the administration canceled three lease sales in the Gulf of Mexico and Alaska. Why? Because they're pursuing a radical environmental agenda for the Green New Deal. It's, it's destroying our economy. It's killing American consumers, and they seem not to care. Ms. Onwuka, it seems to me that the Biden administration spends a lot of time blaming oil companies for prices, but isn't that a little bit hypocritical since they want to make it harder to produce fossil fuels? Well, absolutely. I think what we're seeing is a war on uh, energy right now, particularly fossil fuels. Uh, it's, it's, it, let me read you an interesting quote from someone, and I, I meant to get to it earlier and I couldn't find it. But this person said, this gentleman actually, Paul Lemire, the price of home heating oil under Trump was about 225 per gallon. Under Biden, now I have to pay 509 per gallon. To fill up my gas tank with Trump and his energy independence policies, I was paying $2 per gallon. Under Biden, I spend 445 per gallon. This is insane and has to stop. And I think this represents a lot, the perspective of many Americans who recognize uh, when you uh, are pursuing an agenda, uh, whether it's clean energy or whatever you'd like to, to call it, there are going to be trade-offs that have to be made. And when you continue to make one particular or two particular industries your target, your enemy, um, making it difficult for, uh, for companies to be able to produce, produ to produce more oil now and in the future, obviously it's going to have some negative impacts, and that shows up in the prices. Uh, you laid out some of those examples, the cancellation of, of the Keystone XL pipeline, the freezing of new gas uh, drilling leases on, on, on federal land. I mean, there's so many more, but it's so interesting when you look at the totality of all these policies, it bears out at the gas pump, frankly. It does, and, and, and the great irony, the tragedy of all of it is that if you, if you turn down domestic supply, if you make it impossible for us to meet the, the demand for fossil fuels here, oil and gas, it means that we've got to go hat in hand to OPEC and Russia and Saudi Arabia to get our demand met with the supply from overseas. And guess what? The supply overseas is produced in a much less clean, efficient manner. So ironically, they're doing more harm to the environment with these crazy policies. It makes no sense. Last week, the administration released the Biden-Harris inflation plan to deal with inflation, right? It, it in, in includes increasing fuel economy regulations for cars and, and a pie in the sky goal of ensuring, quote, one of every two cars sold in 2030 burns no fossil fuels. It's, it's odd to me that our president and vice president really think that imposing more regulations on our auto industry is actually gonna somehow lower the cost. Um, what's your reaction to this plan? How ridiculous is this? Does it look, is it as ridiculous as it looks on its face? Uh, I, I think it is. I mean, I, I think when I'm reading through the plan, I didn't see anything that's not the, any policies that are going to actually reduce costs today or in the future, frankly. Um, and, you know, when you're, whether you're talking about energy policies or some of the other uh, things that are included, as well as some of the, uh, the ideas, including Build Back Better, that we've heard today uh, are supposed to be anti-inflationary. Well, they're the definition of inflationary when we consider what the American Rescue Plan did in adding points to the inflation rate right now. So uh, I, I don't see that the inflation policy that the White House has put out is going to make anything better. I do I think it's going to make things worse. It, this so-called anti-inflation plan also mentions fuel economy regulations for trucks. Yeah. So imposing new requirements on the trucking industry seems to be a drag on our economy, given the important role that truckers play in the supply chain. So do you, do you think we should be fighting rising prices by making it harder for trucks to deliver the goods that we use every day? Absolutely not. And I, you know what? I spoke to a trucker in Missouri, in Missouri. He actually owns a trucking business, and he uh, he trains new truckers. And he said one of the challenges right now that they're facing in the trucking industry, they can't get manpower in, in part because of wages, but also because of the federal regulations when it comes to what truck drivers can do, how they have to work, um, how their compensation is tied to you know stops and, and the, the amount of driving that they can do. So when we're in the middle of a pandemic with shortages, with difficult 
difficulty is getting goods from our ports to our sh uh, store shelves, the last thing we need to do is increase regulations on the, the brave people who are out there every day getting our goods to our store shelves. And this is from a trucker in Missouri, someone who knows the industry quite well. The pain is felt across the board. We need to reverse these policies. I yield.